Yes, now you can start. So hello guys, my name is Dharm Desai and I'm going to present on the topic of NCRT class, class 12 uh, biology. Uh, so the topic is human health and diseases. So what is health? Health is the soundness of body and mind. A healthy person is one who is physically, mentally and socially fit in all the respects. So balance, uh, he should eat balanced diet, he should have personal hygiene, he should be doing regular exercises, which are very important to maintain good health. So when people are healthy, they are more efficient to work. So to maintain good health and a balanced diet, a personal hygiene and regular exercises are very much important. So what are the variables that are affecting our health? So the very first variable is lack of homeostasis in our lifestyle, which is imbalance of the diet, fluidity, habits, and exercises. So resting is also included in the exercises. Yes. Uh, the second variable is genetic defects or disorder. Uh, the very last variable is infections. So how to overcome or prevent diseased condition or disease so the very first thing you should do is regular basis of exercises and in regular basis of exercises yoga is must so these are uh, uh, various facts about yoga that uh, it will decrease mental stress it will relieve anxiety it will reduce the inform inflammation in coronary heart diseases, cancer, diabetes, it will relieve in migraine. So uh, <clears throat> yoga is a must to do practice when you are experiencing a diseased condition or you want to prevent diseased condition. So the second thing that you should do is to live a healthy lifestyle what to do and how to live a healthy lifestyle you should breathe clean air you should sleep enough you should eat good amount of food you should eat nutritive food so how we should uh, uh, how we sh uh, should practice the good hygiene uh, regulations uh, these are uh, the criteria so the disease awareness and its effect on different body function we should know that what we are applying to our body is harmful or not and how harmful it is in a particular sense that we must know that what are the variables and what are the characteristics of that particular disease that is affecting to our body and to our bodily functions the second thing is immunization or vaccinations. So immunization or vaccination again infectious diseases. We must immunize ourselves against the infectious diseases in order to prevent certain amount of or certain pathogens. And the third thing is proper disposal of waste to control the vector transmission. So uh, it is also included in the good hygiene practices that we must uh, dispose waste in a proper manner to control various vector transmission. <clears throat> the fourth thing is to maintain good hygienic food and water resources. So after that, we should know that what is the disease. So when one or more in, in the organ systems in human body show impaired functional aspects it will express the problem in various signs and symptoms mentally or physiologically when an organ or an organ system in human body show impaired functional aspects whether uh, that particular sign or symptoms are either mental or physiological we must have to do something in order to prevent it 
or in order to surpass that particular condition that particular thing or that particular stage is known as disease so the disease carrying agents are known as known as pathogens so the diseases can be of uh, two types uh, one is acute or chronic so uh, acute is a sudden the rapid onset so when you have an acute disease uh, it will develop in hours or days so in chronic disease uh, when uh, an acute disease will happen to you that will happen in one or two days but in chronic disease it will take a long time to develop completely or it will it will uh, serve the body it will uh, show its effect uh, annually or perennially so the example of acute diseases are one of the example of an acute disease is influenza and the chronic disease can be tuberculosis so disease can be infectious or non infectious infectious is uh, in infectious disease the physical contact is must and in non infectious disease we uh, the pathogen do not require physical contact so in infectious diseases the examples are typhoid cholera measles and gonorrhea the non infectious diseases are uh, various mental diseases or disorders uh, like uh, uh, particular hormone deficiency uh, we could see dopamine depletion alzheimer diseases uh, disease <clears throat> vitamin or mineral deficiency and uh, uh, there are uh, several diseases uh, like uh, mental inflammation or uh, encephalitis scrappy the bovine uh, encephalopathy spongiformal encephalopathy so these are the common diseases in human uh, the very first topic we are going to discuss is the common diseases in humans uh, so these are the lists of the diseases that we are going to discuss today so the very first disease is typhoid it is caused by the bacteria salmonella typhi and has almost killed over 60 uh, 600000 people annually so it is transmitted through food and water the bacteria will invade through small intestine to grow deeper within the tissue of spleen liver and bone marrow this is the structure of salmonella typhi as you can see it is uh, having uh, so many flagella as well as villi so it will help in evading the intestinal barrier which is known as superior patches so how it will uh, evade the intestinal immune barrier we are going to see this before that uh, we uh, must complete uh, the rest of the symptoms as well as the prevention uh, so symptoms of the typhoids are abdominal pain ulcers mood swings hallucination water stools or diarrhea high fever skin rashes dehydration sudden weight loss so this is the life cycle of the typhoid so uh, salmonella typhi will uh go in the small intestine and invade the pears patch so uh, what will the immune system do it will it will just see the salmonella typhi antigen it will imbibe the antigen so uh, first immune system will send an antigen presenting cell so that particular antigen presenting cell suppose that particular antigen presenting cell is macrophage macrophage will take in the salmonella typhi by endocytosis so the first exposure 
has already been established by the macrophage what will uh, so after the first exposure that particular bacteria will go in the lymph nodes via blood so uh, after the invading of bs page uh, in smaller intestine it will go in the large intestine and will be absorbed by the uh, wall of intestine and by that uh, it will travel through the lymph nodes and uh, via traveling in blood uh, it will reach to liver gall bladder and eventually it will lead uh, it will reach to the spleen where uh, it will Uh, uh, where it to it will complete its uh, cycle and convert themselves into the trophozoite. So this is how the evasion mechanism works. So first, this is the evasion mechanism, which has been taken from the Rafetel et al. 2005 research paper. So the three, uh, T3SS is the cell uh, uh, is the Salmonella typhi strain. So what it will do? It will generate uh, several proteins. First, it will invade uh, the pure patch. It will generate several proteins like uh, SOP P, SOP A, SOP D. And then that particular protein will simultaneously activate the uh, 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 PIP2 and uh, GTPS, which will mm -hmm, which will increase the actin myosin fiber formation. After the increase actin, uh, after the actin myosin fiber formation, it will be expressed through the uh, toll-like uh, cell receptor. The toll like cell receptor it uh, will give the signal to the macrophages. Macrophages will engulf that particular bacteria, and uh, it has uh, 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 what what the main thing that particular uh, typhi strain will do that uh, it will uh, uh, exploit the mechanism of caspase enzyme which will reduce the chemotaxis of particular leukocyte when they will come to the infectious site. So uh, when T3SS strain will exploit the caspase enzyme, the chemotaxis will stop and that my macrophage will be devoid of the phagocytosis. And that is how it will persist in intestine and it will go through the lymph node as well as liver where it will continue its life cycle and convert the cis form to the trophozoic form. <clears throat> so how we are going to diagnose that if a person is having typhoid or not. So typhoid uh, so the strain of Salmonella typhi has two antigens, O and H. O antigen is uh, endotoxin antigen, and the H antigen is flagellar, anti uh, flagellar antigen. So uh, what we will do is that this particular test will be having certain amount of antigens, and the dilutions are as seen. Uh, uh, so when we add serum sample of patients uh, and when we add a serum sample of patient in this particular dilution of antigens the highest dilution 
which will be showing the agglutination will be the positive test results for a specific antigen. So the highest titer would be positive result for a specific antigen. So it is an example that uh, in 1 is to 100, we would uh, get O antigen and above 1, uh, 1 over 100 or uh, 10 raised to minus 2 would get <coughs> as antigen. So the second disease is common cold. It is caused by rhinovirus, which would affect nose and throat. So it will uh, uh, it would be spread by touch and usually adults gets more uh, rhinoviral infection generally two to four times per year. So rhinovirus causes 10 to 40 percent of the cold all over the world. The seasons for this particular rhinovirus infectious cold is autumn, winter and monsoon. So uh, these are the normal symptoms, runny nose, sore throat, coughing, sneezing, appetite loss, low grade fever, water, watery eyes, headache, earache, nausea. These are the treatments that we must take a risk, drink a plenty amount of water. We should take uh, coffee syrups as well as decognizant de constant nasal spray so the third disease is pneumonia so uh, pneumonia is severe lung inflammation uh, or uh, 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 you can say that uh, in the pneumocytes uh, pneumocytal inflammation in lungs so what happens in pneumonia that uh, this particular alveoli, uh, alveoli which we can see in the lungs this particular alveoli would be having two types of cells uh, which will prevent them from collapsing the type 1 surfactant cells and type 2 surfactant cells so what would be the pathogen do that it will invade the type 2 surfactant cells so that type 2 surfactant cells would not be able to produce the surfactant so whenever a path uh, pathogen or a fluid accumula uh, accumulation happens because of various uh, environmental as well as uh, uh, various stochastic uh, stochastic factors the lung would not be able to ooze out that particular pathogen or fluid. So it will cause the accumulation of accumulation of that pathogen or that particular fluid. That that accumulation signal would be taken by the immune system and the nearest capillary would send immune cells to the particular alveoli. So what will happen because that pathogen has already invaded the type 2 cells. Now uh, immune system can uh, can fight uh, and fight against that particular released virus into the uh, fluid. So uh, when they will fight to that particular virus, various amount of inflammatory or pro-inflammatory cytokine uh, will come and increase the level of injury. Or you can say it will increase the level of inflammation. So what will happen? Not only the pathogen will get affected, but also the tissues would be affected too. Uh, so the line of the alveoli would get damaged too. So in order to prevent the damage of the alveoli, a human body will send um, myofibroblasts to uh, uh, to recover the uh, 
uh, what could I say, the lining of the alveoli. But instead, instead of healing that particular uh, wall, it will get thickened. So uh, the surface tension would be even lesser. Uh, so uh, the alveoli will not be able to ooze out a particular pathogen. And, and the pathogens or uh, uh, the pathogen will elevate, invade to various other alveoli because of the alveoli collapsing, or it is also known as the collapsible lungs. So type 2 alveolar cells, unable to produce the surfactant liquid, which would dampen the defense barrier, which will result in the infection in alveoli and the fluid accumulation as well as further immune activation leads to <clears throat> symptoms like uh, breathing difficulties, fever, chills, uh, fever and chills, as well as when uh, cytokines, which would affect, which uh, would have affected to the pathogens, would turn to our body and it would uh, uh it would uh, it, it may reach to the various systems of our body and uh, it is also known as the cytokine shock so it might lead to the multiple organ failure what are the symptoms the symptoms include breathing difficulties fever chills so this disease is transmitted from person to person via droplets. The organism responsible for the causing of this disease is a disease are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza. These are the particular morphology of S pneumoniae as well as Haemophilus influenza. The symptoms are muscle age, dry cough, abdominal pain, cold, fever with shivering, chest pain, nausea or vomiting. So uh, what uh, the very first diagram says, because of the indirect or direct injury, will uh, which will lead to the inflammation in lungs or alveoli. So it will activate the innate immunity of our body. And because of the act activation of innate immunity, cytokines and other pro-inflammatory particles would be released. And instead of harming the pathogens, it would harm the tissue and leads to the dis dysfunction of the lungs. So what are the treatments? Antibiotics for the bacteria, but uh, we can't use antibiotic for virus. Severe pneumonia needs hospitalization and ICU supports because the lung capacity would, would be decreased. So the wet person might feel breathing difficulties. We must, uh, again, this point is very crucial that we must uh, uh, enforce in our life good hygiene practices. Then a vaccination is also must. Uh, then we must avoid the alcohol consumption and smoking. Okay. The uh, another disease is, disease is malaria. Malaria literally means bad air. So it is a mosquito borne disease. Mosquito is the mechanical carrier of this particular disease. The main carrier of the disease is plasmodium. So, how it transmits uh, through an organ transplant or blood transfusion or serum treatment in the case of COVID, uh, the serum treatment is very famous. Okay, so the third is application of huge needles or syringes. We must not do the same practice. The main role is placed, uh, played by a parasite a protozoan named as plasmodium falciparum. There are uh, three 
strains of the plasmodium which causes the disease. But we will study uh, this particular strain. And the organs affected are liver, hepatocytes, and red blood cells. So, how malaria or uh, how the particular parasite would affect the body uh, and how in how it will infect the body and what is the life cycle of malaria so it is a cyclic infection and uh, there are three cyclic phases oh the very first is sporogonic cycle exo erythrocytic cycle and erythrocytic cycle though uh, the sporogenic cycle developed from the uh, mosquito we would see all of the three cycles in one diagram <clears throat> so uh, what will happen that mosquito contains and the gametocytes of plasmodium so that particular uh, larval phase known as macrogametocyte and microgametocyte will enter in the stomach of the insect and uh, they will reproduce and develop a oocyte so uh, after reaching uh, to the mouth of the mosquito they will release the oocyte uh, they will release the oocyte while a mosquito is consuming blood so after releasing the oocytes uh, they are known as sporozoid so uh, oocyte uh, will have a covering so in a covering there are uh, so many uh, little larvas so after the bursting of that particular barrier uh, the ruptured oocyte uh, from uh, ruptured oocytes uh, there will be the ooze out of the sporozoid larva so when mosquito will bite a person for taking blood it will also inject the plasmodium pathogen or plasmodium parasite which is in the form of sporozoid phase so now plasmodium will directly <clears throat> go to the liver cells or hepatocytes in the liver stage uh, in the liver cells or hepatocytes it will take Cyzont. So first, it will infect the hepatocyte. From hepatocyte, it will consume all of the nutrient. So as you can see, the cytoplasm of the cells is oh, very condensed, and uh, this this is the <coughs> uh, sporozoic larva which have uh, become a cyzont by consuming all of the cytoplasmic nutrient from the hepatocyte after consuming all of the cytoplasmic nutrient, they will rupture so after a rupturing they will invade the human blood cells so the stage where the plasmodium affect hepatocyte or liver cells is known as exoerythrocytic cycle and the stage in which the blood cells or erythrocytes are getting affected by the plasmodium or the trophozoid phase is known as the erythrocytic cycle so what will happen that after the rupturing of the cyzon the trophozoid larva which will invade the <clears throat> rbc or red blood cell so uh, it will also consume the all of the cytoplasmic nutrient from the cell and become cyzon after becoming cyzon they will get ruptured 
and some of uh, some of the trophozoic larva will again infect the human blood cells and some of them would become uh, male and female gamete which are known as uh, microgamete as well as macrogametes so uh, when cursor se usko dikhao na figure ko cursor se dikhao ya highlighter se aur acha rahega oh yes sir yes so uh, after the completion of erythrocytic cycle the gametes several uh, several trophozoic larva several mature trophozoic larva would go to the duplication of uh, the erythrocytic uh, cycle and uh, the rest of larva would go to form gametes so they will become macro and micro gametes so this particular life cycle is universal in uh, falciparum vivex and oval <coughs> as well as uh, plasmodium malariae so after becoming uh, gametes micro gametes and macro gametes when an female anopheles mosquito would come to suck blood uh, the pathogen or uh, the micro and micro gametes of the larva would get injected uh, into the mosquito's mouth and then it will uh, they will continue the sporogonic cycle of their particular life cycle so that is why uh, the particular cycle is known as cyclic life cycle so how uh, we must treat this particular disease these are uh, several drugs which uh, we have used in the treatment of malaria uh, the very first drug is chloro chloroquine quinine sulfate hydroxychloroquine mefloquine atavoquinone uh, atalo atav uh, atova quan my bad if my pronunciation is not correct uh, prognil malaria is a preventable and curable disease now it is a curable and preventable disease yes this life threatening disease can be prevented or controlled by certain measures like uh, we must avoid mosquito bite we must use mosquito repellent sprays we must avoid camping by a stagnant water because it could be a rich reservoir of the female anopheles mosquito so using a mosquito net over the bed would be also preferable choice to avoid malarial infection so we must wear long sleeves as well as long pants uh, which is a very orthodox type of prevention the other disease <clears throat> the next one is amebiosis or uh, um, uh, amebiasis so uh, it is known as amoeboic or amoebic uh, dysentery so what is amoebic dysentery which is a parasitic intestinal inflammation with bloody diarrhea so the bloody diarrhea is the characteristics of the amoebiasis okay so the pathogen which cause amoebiasis is entamoeba histolytica uh, so the mechanical carrier of this entamoeba histolytica is house fly or mosquito domestica so uh, in developing countries like india africa <clears throat> this particular disease is quite common because it transmit through the unhygienic practices like cooking as well as uh, uh, we if we do not wash our hands properly and then uh, uh, we might uh, we might get infection from the stool 
from that particular infected person if we are living in tribe and uh, not uh, accepting the urban behavior to maintain the hygiene <clears throat> so if we are uh, cooking contaminated food if we are drinking uh, drinking uh, contaminated water <clears throat> then we could have this particular disease so uh, uh in uh, i have written a small summary of a life cycle that uh, that uh, cysts would be found in the intestinal discharge so that will attract the house fly and the house fly will do the rest of work as the mechanical carrier of spreading the disease so what to do if you want to prevent uh, amoeba cysts so we must prevent house flies uh, 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 to prevent this disease proper hygiene practice must be incorporated in the daily routine these are the symptoms amoeboid liver abscess mild di diarrhea or severe dysentery this is the key symptom of uh, this disease bloody diarrhea then colitis inflammation in colon <clears throat> liver abscess abdominal pain fever appetite loss and nausea so this is a usp for 12th science student if you want to write about any disease you must uh, know the common symptom of disease like uh, abdominal pain fever loss of appetite nausea mood swings these are common symptoms which would get you one or two mark easily so this is the life cycle of antamoeba uh, histolytica so uh, what happens through the carrier or through the contaminated food or water the cyst would be ingested by human so for an example i have ingested uh, this particular entamoeba estelitica what will happen <clears throat> after reaching to the small intestine this disease is detective we can detect the disease but when it reach to call when it will reach to colon uh, to colon will absorb the nutrients from the food that we have ingested so from food uh, the organism would also be passed through the <clears throat> uh, blood and from blood it will cause inflammation in multiple organs like liver lungs as well as brain so this is the life cycle what will uh, life uh, the life cycle contains let the uh, first <clears throat> existation uh, uh, mature cysts would be developed into the small intestine and uh, by the <clears throat> the natural gestation phase they will be uh, developed into the trophozoic larva so uh, after the conversion of trophozoic larva they will multiply uh, this is just like the malarial uh, pathway or the malarial life cycle that uh, certain amounts of the larva would become trophozoic and again infect certain organs and the rest of the larva would become cysts and they will continue the life cycle by releasing themselves into the excretory product so uh, in a nutshell Uh, when we eat contaminated food or uh, drink 
uh, the contaminated water the cysts with uh, the cyst of amoebosis would be ingested by us then uh, the particular cysts would transform into an active active form known as trophozoite and it will invade parasitical barrier it will live there and it will cause mild symptoms or none at all or in some cases the parasite will burrow through the wall of intestine so it can be carried by the blood stream or you can say simply uh, when it will come to the larger intestine or uh, bigger intestine large intestine uh a blood uh, from uh, from food from digested food <clears throat> uh, intestine would consume or it will soak particular nutrient so uh, with nutrients this particular uh, larval stage of the um, uh, entamoeba histolytica known as trophozoite would be also <clears throat> uh, ingested or would be also soaked by the uh, blood and from blood it will infect various organ like liver lung as well as brain and in some of the parasite would pass out in the feces and they will transform back into the cyst to survive in the harsh environmental condition until they found out another host so how we would treat and prevent this disease the symptomatic amoebosis can be treated with the administration of metronidazole following by the elimination of any organism present in the colon by luminal amoebocyte this is a luminal amoebocyte known as tenonitrosol or tenonitrosol the asymptomatic carriers are treated by giving a luminal amoebocyte which will reduce the risk of the transmission the next species is elephantiasis so elephantiasis also known as the lymphatic filariasis because the larval name is uh, filari so the cause of infection is also named as filariasis and it would majorly infect the lymph nodes that is why the disease is known as lymphatic filariasis which is caused by a parasitic worm and it can spread from person to person or through mosquitoes by uh, sorry person to person from or through mosquitoes elephantiasis cause swelling of scrotum legs or breasts elephant ess is considered as a neglected tropical disease in uh, currently developing countries this particular disease is considered as a neglected tropical disease of course we don't care if uh, the medical person or the medical representative government uh, medical representative would give us certain medicine about the elephant ess uh, we could not take the the medicine of this particular disease and on the chances of getting the elephantiasis will get decreases uh, will get increased <clears throat> so elephantiasis is characterized by the abdominal swelling of the tissue and the skin in the lower portion of the body the main target organs are the leg and genitals which become thick and baggy making it difficult for that particular affected person to lead life normally or lead a normal life uh, these three worms uh, would be infected uh, would be involved in the disease ocheraria bancrofti brugaria malai and brugaria timori the worms affect the lymphatic system in the body the lymphatic system is responsible for removing wastes and toxins so uh, in the underarm region as well as the thigh region there are uh, certain lymph nodes so what will happen uh, when 
uh, we are experiencing a diseased condition that lymph node would uh, would get swollen so this particular parasitic larva or worms would infect that particular lymphatic system which will uh, help in the removal of body waste so uh, how to treat and prevent this particular disease <clears throat> so filariasis is one of the painful diseases caused by the mosquitoes and there are uh, several drugs and surgical procedures available to treat this particular condition or by destroying the worms present in the blood so along with this particular treatment certain precautions should be followed to prevent mosquito bite uh, which has already been discussed in the malarial session that we must use the mosquito spray as well as nets to prevent the mosquito <coughs> mosquito bite so this is the life cycle of the lymphatic uh, filariasis causing worm known as uh, ucheria bancrofti uh, so <coughs> Uh, when a larva, uh, uh, when the larva, uh, uh, when the mosquito <clears throat> will bite human, uh, then the larva will be injected. How many days will it take? Hey man, hey. 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 Sir, uh, there are there are eighty three slides, sir. कितने हुए अभी? Sir, thirty five हुए. तो मैं एक एक disease के लिए बस सर अभी है. तो कहीं एक disease का खत्म कर दूँ कर दूँ दूसरे दिन करना है ना? नहीं सर, sir infective diseases जो हैं वो खत्म हो गए हैं एस्टारियासिस से. ठीक है, stop कर देना है ना? जी सर जी सो यू गेट दैट पर्टिकुलर पैथोजन फ्रॉम अ मॉस्किटो बाइट देन दैट पैथोजन वुड इन्फेक्ट द लिम्फ नोट्स सो द लार्वा विल माइग्रेट टू द वेसल्स एंड नोट्स वे दे डेवलप इनटू द थ्रेड लाइक वर्म्स this is female worm which is generally longer and cylindrical shape this is male worm so what what they will do uh, worms will typically live 5 to 7 years inside the body so when uh, that government official would tell us that you should take the medicine and we are generally denying uh, denying um, those uh, requests so we should take those medicines because this uh, this disease is particularly uh, chronic disease and will lead to the immobilization of our body and complete change of our lifestyle so it will damage the lymphatic system and block the lymphatic system so uh, what will happen because of the blockage uh, our lymphatic system would not be able to not be able to <coughs> remove waste so it will look like a, a leg of an elephant that is why the disease is known as elephantiasis the next disease is ascariasis or uh, <coughs> It is also known as uh, Karmi and Gujarati. Many, many of our students or many of our children are uh, familiar with this particular disease. So the disease Ascariasis is caused by an interna uh, intestinal parasite known as Ascariasis or roundworm. Roundworm is a pale white, long slender tube-like worm that will live in intestine of human. Uh, it will be present uh, it will be presented in the feces of a uh, person 
O is infected to it and uh, will form X in the form of X. So the uh, the flies, generally house flies, are considered as the mechanical vector or vector of roundworms. The roundworms are generally asymptomatic, but uh, uh, symptoms could appear depending on the numbers of roundworm present in the person. So, so symptoms include fever, uh, uh, breathing difficulty or shortness of the breath, malnutrition, abdominal swelling, diarrhea. Children are the most affected. So this is the life cycle of the worm. Uh, uh, the larva would be developed into the adult worms. So uh, the adult worm uh, will uh, also reproduce and create larval forms, which would uh, hatch in uh, uh, hatch <coughs> and enter in the circulation and migrate to lungs. And because of the ing uh, ingestion of the embryonic eggs, who would get this particular disease? <clears throat> so, what are the treatment and the prevention of uh, the escariasis or roundworm? Uh, this is the treatments recommended by who are uh, albendazole and nabendazole. The prevention uh, would be improved access to the sanitation, uh, properly functioning, uh, functioning and cleaning of toilets, would, uh, which would greatly reduce the possibility of fly picking up a roundworm egg and infecting someone else means uh, it will uh, greatly decrease uh, the amount of mechanical carriers involved in the disease. Uh, washing hands with soap, soap after using the restroom would be recommended. The last disease and the final topic of today's presentation is ringworm. So ringworm, uh, also known as uh, dermatophytosis, uh, or uh, known as the fungal infection, or over a or over skin or fungal inflammation over skin so it is a fungal infection of, of the skin uh, it can affect both humans and animals infection appears initially as a red patch and uh, it will uh, uh, it will then affect the areas uh, that later spreads to the different areas of the body, uh, uh, it majorly affect uh, uh, that particular major areas are uh, scalps, nails, feet, groin, and beard. Uh, beard. So the treatment and prevention of uh, this disease is uh, to maintain cleanliness and hygiene, wash hands and sanitizers, uh, wear clean iron clothes. So the, the motto of this particular treatment and prevention of all of the diseases are to maintain good hygiene practices. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the summary of all of the diseases that I have included. In fact, these are the summary of all infectious diseases that I have gone through. Sir. Ho gaya. Hello. Yes, listening. Ho gaya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good.